Today, we will learn how to implement Howler.js in our Rails application. Howler.js is an audio library for the modern web. It defaults to web API, audio API, and falls back to HTML5 audio. Today, we will learn how to implement it in our application. So, I have our blank Rails application here. And we will generate a scaffold. I will simply call it article with a title. I also install active storage. This is what we will use to attach our audio files. And that we have done that, we can run Rails DB migrate. Then we can update our routes and change the root articles that index and then we can head over to our article.rb file in our model and we can see it has one attached and we we'll call it audio we head over to our articles controller and we allow audio in our strong parameters Then we head over to our, our form and we copy this, and then we paste it. So we'll change this to audio and we'll change this text field to file field. And then we can save this. So if we start our Rails application, And we head over to localhost 3000. You can see we can create a new article. And we'll call it first audio. Then we can add our audio. So I'm just going to select some more royalty free music here. And then we can click on create article. And now you can see everything works fine, but we've not installed Howler.js to play our audio. So we head back to our code editor and in our terminal, we can do import map pim howler. And this is pin howler.js for us. So if we use import map pin howler, can see it pinned successfully. And if you look at our import map file, you can see it has been pinned here. So we can copy this and head over to hello.controller.js. And here you could simply import, say how from from Howler. And we don't need this anymore. And let's rename this to <coughs> Howler Controller. Well, before we do that, <coughs> let's make a few changes. If we go to our show.json builder file, we can see um, we have our JSON partial data here. If we look here, we look go to one.json. You can see we have our ID and our title. And we also have the URL. Well, we notice that we do not have the link for our audio file here. So what we can do is, once we come here, we can add JSON dot audio URL. This will be the, and we can say raw rails blob URL, and we pass our article.audio. So this will give us the link to our audio file. We come back here and we refresh it. We can see it gives us the link to our audio file. 
So we'll head back to our show page and we'll wrap this in a div data controller and we'll call it Howler. And we can close this here. So if you look at our documentation here for Howler.js, it says in the browser, we could simply do this. We import Howler and Howl, Howler and Howler. And then we can simply do for our sound, of course, the new Howl. And then we pass the source or the media file that we want to play, the audio file. So we can go ahead and do that. Since we have our, our JSON file that has all the links, we'll use the Rails request JS library to make our request to our JSON file to get all this data. So if you look at it here, we can just simply add the gem request JS Rails to our application and go to our gem file. We add that and then we run bundle and then you can simply run rails request yes install and now that that is completed we can add that to our stimulus controller so we start this up once again and we head over to Howler controller. So we can do import and we can say fetch request from, you can see rails request JS. So if we come back here, and we open up our console, you can see there are no errors here. So to begin, to begin, we'll define a method and we'll use async and let's say, let's call it get data. And here, We'll set a constant for our request. And we'll say new fetch request. And this particular fetch request is a get request. And here we'll pass in the link that we want to get the data from. And for that, we can do window.location the href that will give the current URL that we're in. But since it's a JSON file and we're doing this in the show page, we can just add the JSON here. If we copy this and we head here and we look in our console and we paste it, you can see it returns to the current URL. And that is what we want the JSON file of it. And then we do const response await request perform. So if the response, if we get an okay from the response, we can set our body because we want the res want the body of the response, and we'll pass it as JSON. So we we'll use response for the body for the response. It's called text, and that's what we want. So if the response is okay, we can simply let's log it to the console and see what information we get. So. We have that. 
let's see what information we get. So if we use an initialize instead of a connect, initialize, and we call this dot get data. We come back here, you can see that we misspelled this in knit shall lies. So if we come back here, there we go. You can see we're logging out our object data. And you can see we have our audio URL, our ID, our title. And what we want to use is the audio URL. So if we come back here, we could say this dot sound equals new how for how js and then we can set the source to body.audio.url. So if we come back here, you can see there are no errors. And now that we have done this, we can simply do this dot sound dot play to play our audio. And there we go, you can see our audio is playing, even though it's not coming from, because my microphone is plugged in, but the browser says it's playing. So, we can move this out here. You just simply cut it out and then we could also define another method let's just say call it play music and then we can paste this there and we'll also like to pause music and we could say this dot sound dot pause and also we would also like to stop music and we could do this dot sound dot stop and we can save it and all of this information is simply got it from the documentation if I search stop I should be able to you can see on stop and you can see stop and pause and play these are all gotten from the documentation. So what we want to do next is we want to assign this to some buttons. So we head over to our show page and um, we could simply do, let's call this button, we'll say data action and since it's howler and we could say pause music and then we can say pause here we close this up and we can say play and stop change this to play and we'll change this to stop so now that we have done that we can go back here go to our application 
Let me click here. You can see we have our pause, play, and stop. If we click on play, it begins to play. And we can pause it. You can play again and pause it and you can also stop another feature that i would like to add is being able to pause our mu music and then when we do that when we pause it we'll, we will get the current location the current play, lo play location and we'll save this in our database so in any time we come back to the page and we click on play it will continue from where we stopped so what we will do next is we will come to our con console or our terminal and we'll add a new we'll generate a new migration using rails generate migration and we can add add position to article and position is of type float and then we can run rails db migrate so now that we have done that we head over to our form and we'll copy this and paste it again here and we'll call this position We'll change this to number field and we'll change this to position and then we can say step any this will allow us to use decimals in our in our field so we head over to our articles controller and then we'll add position to the strong parameters now that we have done that, we click on at this article, you can see our position field shows up. And if we look at our documentation, if we in HoloJS, you can see to get the the current position or the seek position, we could use seek. So seek it says get set the position of playback for some. So we can use that. And we can test it out first. If we go to HalloJS and and our pause music method, we could do console dot log dot this dot sound dot seek, right? So if we come back here and go back to articles. We show this. And we click on play. We click on pause again you can see it gives us this this number here this float if we continue to play it and then we pause it again we see we get a different we get a different um, number here different float here so we want to save this in our application and to do that we'll go to our JavaScript file. We'll come back here and we'll define another method using async. And we'll sync. That will allow us to um, update the position of the media that we're playing. So we can say async and let's say update data. Uh, rather update position and we'll use const response equals await patch and we will include patch here we'll import it and we can do window dot location dot href this is our update URL and then we can do can 
set the body of the what we want to send over to our server and we'll use json dot stringify and what we want to send is the position and the position is this dot sound dot seek so if the response is okay response dot okay we could just say console dot log okay so if we save this we come here and we refresh we click on play our audio begins to play we click on pause You can see nothing happens. That is because we simply forgot to add it here. So if you could say um, update position, we refresh, we click on play, and then you click on pause. You can see a request was made to our our server. We could do it again, click on play and click on pause once again. You can see there was an update and the position was changed to this. All right. So if we update our show page, and we want to also, or rather we go to article. We also want to display the position. You can see this is the position. If we click on play and click on pause once again and see it has been updated. So our next step is to ensure that when we click on play it resumes from this position and not from the beginning so we head back to our controller so what we can do is simply add this dot sound dot seek and we get um, the position from our body so if we click on play let me refresh this If we click on the music still starts from the beginning and that is because if we go here and we'll look at the JSON we can see that while we have everything here we do not have the position we created that uh, we didn't add it to our JSON setup so if you go to article.json.jbuilder you can see our extract here it contains our id our title our created ad, and then our updated ad so if we add position and we refresh it you can see our position shows up once more it shows up here and if we come back here we go to show and we click on play and we pause it once again and see the position has changed and if we start playing again it starts from this new position and not from the beginning So that is all for this application. With this setup like this, it would be possible to build an audiobook player, but that would be for another video.